I put every monument in the world in Constantinople. The Eastern Roman Empire, Byzantium, gets every single buff that a monument can give you in Europa Universalis 4. Goods produced, development costs, advisor costs, and much, much more, all available for the Greeks to use to their benefit. My buddy Icepire did a similar video to this about a year ago, so if you enjoy this, you should check his channel out as well. And also on that note, if you enjoy this video, make sure to like it and subscribe for more content because you are not going to want to miss out on what we have to come. Ah, back to the 1444 start date. No natives, just as I intended, and every monument in the world in Constantinople. Ask and you shall receive. Look at all these modifiers. Absolutely busted. Yeah, that's a smooth 125% advisor costs. 10% discipline in day one. Doesn't look like governing capacity is going to be an issue. Or passing ideas. Also, it helps that Constantinople produces like two-thirds of the world's glass. And it costs four mana to develop it at the moment. That's pretty crazy. But you guys know how we find these things out. We turn it up to speed five and we unpause. The opening war against Epirus over here, of course, Byzantium is going to be looking to reconquer this land and probably just full annex them. There you go. That is a full annex. I'm really hopeful that if the Ottomans can't take Constantinople, which I very strongly doubt they can, that will allow Byzantium to essentially thrive because they're the only one that really opposes them early. Taking the first round of tech for 397 mana. That's pretty crazy. They have four monuments that are giving them tech discounts, so that's pretty good. Allied to Serbia, Hungary, and Aragon, so it's safe to say they're probably not going to get attacked by the Ottomans, but uh, with only 12,000 men in the field, I don't think they're going to be attacking the Ottomans either. The Byzantines, aggressors against Venice this time, attacking for some islands in the Aegean, and it looks like they're having no problem getting plenty of claims already. And 15 years in, Athens has been integrated, Euboa, Naxos, Crete, and Rhodes have all joined back with the Romans. Oh, and I almost missed it. It looks like the Byzantines have actually declared war on the Ottomans, calling in their friends of Wallachia and Hungary. The Ottomans have numerical superiority on land, but the Byzantines definitely have the galley fleet to win. So if they can nail down this side of the straits and um, possibly just keep these giant armies over there, they should be fine. Oh my gosh, yeah. So take a look at this. 31 ducats in Constantinople versus 14 in Genoa and 19 up here in the English Channel. Oh, nice. It even appears they got fastening here as well. Plenty of goods produced to be had here. They've also developed it all the way up to 49, uh, which is pretty nuts. 21 base tax, leaning into that tax meta pretty heavily. Yeah, take a look at this. Total income of 113, netting over 97 ducats per month. Absolutely legendary. I think it's safe to say that the Ottomans cannot maintain these losses, losing 47,000 men, compared to Byzantium's 10. <laughs> That's pretty solid. Hungary doesn't have the combat buffs that Byzantium does, so... They take a lot more losses whenever they get involved in battles. 78%, they're on low enthusiasm. It's only a matter of time. And how is that for an AI peace deal? Reconquered all of their cores, as well as took one, two, three, four, five, six extra provinces. That is incredible. We now have Ottomans and Ottoman Balkans. You'll love to see it, folks. Meanwhile, in the rest of Europe, England is doing well in Ireland and France is doing well in, well, France. The Danes have pushed into Novgorod and Muscovy is pushing down south. Timmy is being aggressive and is all the way into India already. And Bengal has been spanked. A shell of what they once were. Poland decided to go with the personal union over Lithuania. Exploration for Castile, as well as Portugal. Eco for France, and Humanist for England. Byzantium went innovative for their first idea group, and uh, looks like they pushed through it pretty quickly because the monuments give them minus 50% idea cost. And how about that? 20 years in, Byzantium is actually in the great power slot, though I don't know if that's actually going to be a thing, because uh, as soon as these guys embrace the institution, they're going to get kicked out, but maybe they'll outgrow it. Hard to say. And another 10 years later, Byzantium has beaten up Venice again, taking a bunch of land from them, especially over here in Dalmatia, and is currently conquering Skanderbro. Constantinople's development is all the way up to 58, with 71 per development click, which is still crazy cheap. 26 base tax, bro. That is actually insane. And the whole home state gets it. So Thrace is going to be really high developed. Look at this. Adrianople is already 37. 24 up here in Misambria. Gallipoli is 26. This one over here is 23 as well. That is crazy, dude. Just take a look at this. You can see the development of Thrace from space. It is clearly the most developed state in the game, if I had to guess at least. Absolutely insane income, all the way up to 181 just 32 years in, collecting 85 ducats per month from trade. I am in awe. They're also transferring a very, um, dank. 4.2 ducats per month from Alexandria into Constantinople. Or Venice over here. They never stood a chance. Getting absolutely dogpiled on because Byzantium basically destroyed them. There's a little bit of war going on over here in Spain. Castile dominating over Aragon as well as Navarra. 
Also, the partition of Hungary is well underway. Austria, as well as Bohemia and Poland getting a little piece of that. We're getting a bit interesting here. Byzantium has attacked Florence for Corsica, who has called in France. And believe it or not, Byzantium is uh, numerically superior. Definitely navally, with 15 heavies and 39 galleys. This one's probably going to be more of a battle of uh, logistics, right? Just figuring out how to get armies around rather than just, you know, marching them. We'll see how it goes. My goodness, what an absolute bloodbath. Three years in, we have 130,000 dead between the two sides. That is crazy. Austria decided to get involved on Byzantium side, so that's only going to help them. Look at these numbers. 75,000 infantry versus 27. Yikes. Who was in Paris? Byzantines was in Paris. And here we go. Sardinian culture, Corsica. Now, under the Byzantine banner. You have to remember, they do have a unique mission tree introduced in the Purple Phoenix DLC. So uh, they're going to get a lot of claims, especially over here in Anatolia. Jeez, oh, Pete, if you would have blinked, you would have missed it. Turns out Byzantium also wanted some more Ottoman clay, and uh, they have destroyed every single troop that the Ottoman army had. 78,000 Turks have uh, perished at the hands of the Byzantines, with only 33,000 Byzantines. And like I just showed you, they have a lot of claims. Oh yeah, they took the clay. They took a lot of clay. Byzantium very comfortably in the number two spot. And you can actually see their development going up as they develop their nation very, very quickly as time goes on. And they actually just switched to the number one spot because uh, Ming is behind on tech. But crazy to think that Byzantium went from three provinces or four provinces or whatever, all the way up to the number one great power in just 52 years. Kind of hard to think about, really. Though I guess when you actually have literally hundreds of modifiers stacked up, it's, it is going to make a pretty sizable difference, yeah. Well, taking a look over here, there's definitely been some border changes and uh, there's a lot to learn. It's only 1520, but a lot has changed since we last looked. The Western Mediterranean Isles are all Byzantine, as well as parts of Italy, as well as over here in Slovenia. Southern France has been split up between a few different tags, like Toulouse. The Byzantines are also down here in Nice, which is funny. English are still over here, and it looks like they actually took Picardy from the French. And the Swedes and the Norwegians have actually taken some land from Denmark. Muscovy has yet to form Russia, but they are still expanding. And not expanding is the Ming. They are shrinking because they are collapsing. Still a bit of a warlord period over here in Japan, though we do have a Korean Hokkaido, which is pretty cool. India is definitely still a mess, but we've got a few tags in the north and VJ down here in the south. And Timmy has succumbed to their subjects. They just couldn't hang. Two of the coolest flags in the game, Kasanji over here in Central Africa and Benin over here in Sub-Saharan Africa. Very cool. And the colonial game is still young, but we've got Castile in Brazil and Portugal in Chile, as well as Argentina. Portugal is also making a mad dash for the Caribbean, and they are basically getting it to themselves. And we've got French and English up here in Canada. No surprise there. The Reformation is, of course, underway, and we've got Northern Germany, as well as Scandinavia, is Protestant. And then a bunch of Protestant over in England, but it looks like they decided to switch it up and go Anglican after going Protestant. And for a little bit of historical flavor, we've got a center of Reformed Reformation down here in Switzerland, but it's not in Geneva. My oh my, a lot can change in 50 years. Byzantium's aspirations of Marinostrum and reuniting the Roman Empire are well underway. They're down into Mesopotamia, well into the Levant and all the way to the Nile Delta, all the way over to Tunisia, and they've even got some land in Iberia. Not to mention the conquests in southern Italy as well as northern Italy and Savoy. Meanwhile, the Russian bear has formed and they are pushing their way into Scandinavia. They decided that that was where they wanted to go next. These big shared borders are uh, probably a sign of things to come between the Byzantines and the Spanish. The blobs in India continue to blob and uh, fight each other, so <laughs> we'll see who comes out victorious in this one. Though I do have to say, I do appreciate seeing a strong Mewar, because as you guys know, Mewar never changes. Russia has lands bordering on Lake Baikal, and meanwhile Shun is the one trying to make China great again. We do have a unified Japan and, uh, I hate to say it guys, but they've got some lands in Korea. Portuguese Peru and Portuguese Rio de Prata are a thing, as well are Spanish Brazil and now a new Granada looking pretty solid already. The Caribbean is exclusively Portuguese, as is Mexico, though uh, that tip on the Yucatan over there is actually the Caribbean colony, so a little funny there. The Spanish are in California, and uh, apparently I'm not allowed to make jokes about it because people get upset about them. But the East Coast is definitely a bit of a mixed bag. We have New Denmark, Britain colonies, Norwegian colonies, Spanish colonies, and then up in Canada, we have French as well as English up there as well. Byzantium is surrounded by some very solid nations. France and Spain are both doing quite well in their own regards, and the Commonwealth has opportunity, but uh, Russia is pushing on them pretty good. With 140 years left, Byzantium's borders just get 
even more beautiful every time I look. They have not a single enclave except for Georgia over there. They've got lands in the Maghreb. They've got lands in Iberia. They've got plenty of lands in France. They've got plenty of lands all the way up to Milan in Italy. And they also have almost the entirety of Hungary as well as Moldavia over into Crimea. Dare I say, barring a couple of provinces over here, they may have a Mare Nostrum. The Mad Lads even built the Suez Canal. Legendary. Why do their unit models have fezes? I don't think that's a Byzantine thing, right? Yeah, this is an army too. I don't know. That seems kind of weird. Russia continues to grow, has all of the lands all the way over into Manchuria and even Northern Korea. They split right at the parallel between North and South Korea with Russia and Japan, so truly a pretty cursed timeline, though there is a Shun province over here for good measure. Ming has managed a bit of a comeback considering that they were like five provinces, so good on them. NZ is Portuguese and Australia is Portuguese with a little bit of French in there to make it extra messy. Malacca and this Banjar over here are doing quite well in Southeast Asia. And VJ decided to step down and make room for a massive, beefy, beautiful color Rajputana. Honestly, it looks like a color that you would see from a custom nation or like a player made nation tag. Well, so I think that's sweet. I, I really do love this tag. I think it's gorgeous. Ethiopia is doing OK over here. All things considered, they do border a uh, Byzantium. So, yeah, they keep losing wars to them and losing a little bit of territory, but they've pushed into the interior of Africa, so they may yet still have a chance. Benin has hilariously migrated all the way up to the Sahara and borders a couple of other nations, but mostly European nations. <laughs> Sadly, the British Congo has taken over Kasanji. They do still exist, but um, barely. As has South and East Africa, they have been colonized by the Spanish and the Portuguese as well. And speaking of the Spanish and the Portuguese, a little bit more of that down in South America, though it looks like they actually just filled out the colonial regions that they had at first. But we do have a French Patagonia, so that's a thing. North America is a bit interesting as well. We've got Spain on the west, England and a little bit of Spain on the east, France in the north, and Portuguese in the middle parts as well as in the Caribbean. Though it's super funny because Portuguese Mexico has an enclave inside of the Caribbean nation in the Yucatan Peninsula. We also do have Danish Central America, and I believe that these provinces over here are Danish as well. So the Danes are pretty much everywhere. Protestant is the official faith of the HRE with, um, yeah, you guessed it, Denmark as the emperor. And realistically, there's just not that many Catholics left in the world. Anglicans, obviously, in the British Isles with Germans and a little bit of Reformed. Obviously, there's Anglicans over there in the British Isles. And Germany is, for the most part, Protestant with a couple of Reformed provinces. But I don't think there's many nations that actually follow that faith. And of course, the rest is Orthodox because Byzantium has really good conversion speed. I don't know if you've ever played them, but they have really, really good conversion speed. They've converted a ton of lands over here in the Levant as well as into Arabia. Mecca is actually Orthodox, which is kind of weird to think about. Russia is also doing a really good job converting. Mongolia and Manchuria have mostly been colonized and converted. And this is the state of the world in 1821. Byzantium with almost four times more dev than anyone else in the world, but are you really surprised? Russia in a very solid second place with Great Britain behind them. And then like 800 development below Russia is France, followed by Malacca, who's actually super close to France, Spain, Utrecht apparently, and then Florida. Florida is a great power. Okay. <laughs> they, they don't actually have the biggest navy in the world either, so they're not even gaining points, but you do you, I guess. Currently wrapped up in a war with France and Russia, Byzantium still absolutely holding their own, destroying the boys in Iberia, dominating in France as well as Northern Italy, getting everything consolidated, pushing all the way through Bohemia and Poland, and they even have Marienburg, one province away from a coast on the Baltic. I do have to say their borders are extremely beautiful for an AI, I'm, I'm impressed. Though I have to say I am a bit disappointed that Rajputana got destroyed. They seemingly migrated to Southern and Eastern India rather than the Western parts where they started. And despite no matter what we do, Bengal is inevitable. But take a look at this Malacca. Even though it looks like they lost some land to the British, they still managed to be very respectable in the end date. Not so respectable, but still respectable. Ming migrated down to southern China, getting squeezed between Malacca and the Ruskies. And Japan finished with almost exactly the same borders as they had from the last time I looked like 150 years ago. As did the borders over here, they are literally like exactly the same. The new world looks a little bit different. It looks like Portugal collapsed. Uh, new Granada and Spanish Brazil are both still colonies, of course, but Paraguay and Chile are down here independent as all get out. With the friends up here in Cuba and Mexico doing their thing also. They even kept their goofy enclave borders over here in the Yucatan. And probably the funniest thing that I've seen so far in this post-game look through, this is Cuba. Cuba took Lisboa from Portugal, right next to this one that France took from Portugal. I have no idea. Cuba also took a couple of provinces up here in the north of Portugal, so somebody was picking them apart. 
But yeah, we've got a couple of Floridas, but uh, the one that we're actually talking about being the great power is the one that's Louisiana slash like Oregon. I don't understand these borders. They make no sense to me, but this is what we're working with and this is what we got to do. I regret to inform my Canadian friends that uh, if you weren't French before, you are now. Though, if you are down here, like in Toronto, you're actually a, a newfie now. So, which one do you want? You have to pick one, though. Florida, over here, the Spanish colony, and the 13 colonies still duking it out for dominance on the East Coast. Now, this is weird. I was wondering why these guys exist, because Denmark does not exist. They are a vassal of Florida. So, that's a thing. I, I don't know how a colonial nation is a subject, but that, that's a thing. Because we don't have Denmark, but we do have Scandinavia who has formed. But how about that Utrecht? All of Northern Germany is Utrecht, and it all came right back around, and Austria is the emperor of the HRE. Utrecht, of course, with Westphalia and Pomerania are the three electors, with um, quite a big loss of imperial authority. Austria is an OPM up here in Erfurt. Super, super funny. And we do have a Swabia down here as well, which formed in the Ohm video, so that's pretty cool. Now, taking a look at the religious map mode, you're going to see some interesting borders, especially over here in the New World. And some of you guys might know why, but uh, I think it's because of this mission right here gives an event to every Catholic nation in the world to convert to Orthodox. So we have an Orthodox Christian Paraguay, an Orthodox Christian Great Princedom of Florida, Mexico, you guessed it, Orthodox, and even allied to Byzantium. Hilarious. So yeah, there's quite a bit of Orthodox in the world. Oh, even better yet, Ethiopia went Orthodox as well. What the heck, bro? <laughs> I don't know how that happened, but that's awesome. That's really good. Aside from that, religions are basically what they were last time we looked. Protestant in North Germany as well as Scandinavia, but obviously the Orthodox have pushed them out. And then Anglican over here on the British Isles as well as their colonies. And in the New World, there is an Anglican province, but uh, other than that, it's Catholic, Orthodox, and a little bit of Protestant up here in Canada as well as Wisconsin. This is an absolute mess down here. We got Orthodox NZ and then Australia is Catholic over here. New South Wales is Catholic and then the rest is Orthodox with a couple of random Protestant provinces. China is almost exclusively Orthodox and then we've got the Sunnis over here, uh, but they haven't converted much of Southeast Asia. Culture map mode is a bit of a doozy. So I've had it explained to me. The way that it works is that they will convert provinces to cultures that they accept that will continue the borders. So when we're looking at the borders over here, you can see there's been quite a bit of cultural conversions. The Byzantines converted all the way over into India, Turkish culture, Syrian is the culture of 90% of Arabia, and then Egyptian all the way from Nubia over into Morocco, which is insane to me. They even converted the bulk of Iberia to Andalusian as well as southern France to Ossetan. Italy is mostly Romagnol and Neapolitan. And the Balkans? Serbian. It's all Serbian. Aside from that, Czechs have expanded a bit and the Poles have fallen back a bit. The Pontics have pushed well up into Ruthenia and Russia. The New World is basically all Iberian with Brazilians in the south and Platinians in the north, which is hilarious. And then North America is Mexican, Portuguese, Mexican, Castilian. But we also have American up here in the north as well as parts of Canada. And then English over here with a couple of random provinces. This video was recommended by people like you in the comments. So if you have a recommendation of something that you would like to see, make sure you leave it in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like it because I really do appreciate that. And if you haven't already subscribed, I don't know what I got to do to get you to subscribe. You are missing out on a ton of fun content. If you want to join my Discord, my subreddit, my Twitter, there's plenty of ways to get involved in my community. Those are all linked in the description below the video. And if you want to pitch me a couple of bucks on my Patreon, you'll get early access to these videos and you'll also help pay my editors. Anyways, guys, that is all I've got for you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Till next time, stay chill.